this talk is a very interesting dahil we will learn the introduction to the Flutter framework and how we'd learn it if we were to start from scratch. So our first guest speaker for today is a software engineer intern for Certike, a blockchain security startup and a grade 12 student at De La Salle University, Manila. An avid learner, he was intrigued by computer science during his 11th grade and has continuous, continuously sought knowledge in this field through online learning and personal projects. In his free time, he contributes to open source projects, writes articles, and develops his own projects in software engineering and machine learning. Additionally, he also takes numerous online courses on Coursera to seek knowledge that isn't normally taught to students in high school. So please help me welcome Mr. Erickson Neil Ruara II for how I'd learn Flutter if I were to start over. Let's give him a virtual round of applause. Uh, hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, sir. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, right. nice. So, good morning, everyone. Welcome to you all, and thanks for tuning into this talk. And I hope that you're all excited to learn more about Flutter. So, in this talk, I'll be talking about the Flutter framework in case you're not aware of what it is, its advantages over other technologies out there, and how I learn it if I have to start all over again. So I'll skip the slides since my introduction na kanina. So what is Flutter? Flutter is a, first and foremost, a cross-platform applications framework created and open sourced by Google for building fast, beautiful apps on multiple platforms with a single code base. A common misconception is that Flutter is a UI framework, but it's actually more than that. Flutter is a powerful technology that allows developers to build per per performative apps in a productive and flexible manner. The underlying programming language behind Flutter is called Dart, which Google also created and open source, which has then evolved into a programming language that allows developers to be productive in developing fast and beautiful applications. Because of this, the capabilities of Flutter wouldn't have been possible in any other language other than Dart. So let's talk about more about the Dart programming language. So Dart also forms the foundation of Flutter, and Dart provides the language and runtime that powers other apps. But Dart also supports many core developer tasks, such as format, formatting, analyzing, and testing code. There are a plethora of available libraries for Dart for almost everything that you need. This, this includes libraries for asynchronous programming, accessing HTML elements, current function interface for interoperability to C and C++, cryptography, Windows integration, and many more. Dart is type safe, which means that Dart ensures that a variable's value is the same as a static type. And because of this, Dart can protect you from null exceptions at runtime through static code analysis. Another important feature of Dart is its compiler technology, which allows it to target numerous platforms. So speaking of the compiler technology behind Dart, let's talk more about it. For apps targeting mobile and desktop devices, Dart includes both a Dart virtual machine with a just-in-time compilation and an ahead-of-time compiler for producing machine code. Just-in-time compilation is used when you're developing, while ahead-of-time compiler is used in the deployed version of your app. So this means that Dart allows you to have natively fast performing applications in native devices. So for example, if your device is on Android, Dart will compile your code using Android libraries, while if it's in iOS, it will compile it using iOS libraries, and so on and so forth with, this, with Windows and Linux machines. For apps targeting the web, Dart includes both a development time compiler and a production time compiler, which, is, which are similar to the just-in-time compiler and ahead-of-time compiler, respectively. Both compilers translate Dart into JavaScript. So all that I mentioned in the past two slides, brings us back to what I said earlier, which is that Flutter wouldn't have its capabilities in any other programming language except Dart. Now, I have here a table comparing Flutter to other technologies. And as you can see, 
Tutter is the only one out of the listed technologies here that lets you quickly and freely produce cross platform applications with native performance. And it's also open source, which means that it can help in the development of the framework itself. Other technologies such as React Native here doesn't offer native performance due to React Native having a JavaScript layer in them. While native development for Android and iOS is slow compared to Flutter as you have to write different code bases to target different architectures. This also applies when, na when developing natively for Windows and Unix systems. Git, on the other hand, is very similar to Flutter in that it's multi-platform, open source, and compiles to native code. However, it uses C++ for the back end and JavaScript for the front end, which isn't nearly as productive as writing code in Dart. And unlike in Flutter, you have to pay a monthly fee if you want to develop apps for commercialized use. So who's using Flutter? The advantages that Flutter provides over other technologies has led it to its being trusted by leading brands all over the world. Some companies that use Flutter include Google, wherein they use it in their Google Play and Google Stadia mobile apps. Um, another company that uses Flutter is called Drive, wherein they use it in their web apps. And Drive was actually initially developed in JavaScript, and wherein they used the documentation object mapping model. And then they rewrote that tool in React, and then they rewrote it again in Flutter because they decided that Flutter allows them, allowed them to build a more performative and stable application. And Rise, if you don't know, is an app that allows you to create interactive animations and that you can deploy in your applications within in Flutter, React, React Native, WebAssembly, Kotlin, Java, Swift, and C++. So Rive can um, export animations to create in their editor, which is written in Flutter. Other than that, we also have Reflectly, which uses Flutter in creating their mobile application. And Reflectly is also one of the first companies to use Flutter in their production app and it's actually featured in the Flutter YouTube channel. Okay, so other companies that use Flutter are Toyota and BMW. Toyota uses Flutter in their infotainment system, which is yung tablet-like na device na naka-embed sa mga kotse. Toyota also uses Flutter in the apps they build and deployed in their infotainment system. BMW, on the other hand, uses Flutter in their mobile application, which they rewrote from scratch after determining that using native Android and iOS technologies led to features and design discrepancies having grown too large. So BMW is also one of the early adopters of Flutter and by switching to Flutter, they were able to move faster, maintain consistency and delight their users to the applications that they built. Other big companies that, use, that are using Flutter that they didn't include in the slides are the likes of Canonical, which is the, um, the company backing the Ubuntu Linux distribution, Alibaba, Grab, MongoDB, Microsoft, and many, many more. Okay, so now that you have, that you know the capabilities of Flutter, its advantages over other technologies, and some of the companies within Flutter, it's now time for my advice to you guys on how I learned Flutter from scratch. That is from no. That is if you're coming from no programming experience whatsoever. And I guess I jumped with some presentation for a while. So the first thing I'd, I'd have to learn is, of course, in the doctoral computer science and programming concepts. For this, I would suggest Harvard's free course, Test 50, an introduction to the intellectual enterprises of computer science and the art of programming. This course teaches students how to think algorithmically and solve problems efficiently. And I'm of the opinion that CS50 is the best introductory computer science course out there, period. So um, for me, it easily trumps any other online introductory courses out there for computer science that you can find. And a lot of people say that it's better than their colleges into the computer science course. Topics discussed in this course includes abstraction, algorithms, data structures, encapsulation, resource management, security, and software engineering. However, I'm only going to recommend up until the seventh week of the course as it pivots to web development after the seventh week. I suggest that even if you've already taken an intro to computer science class, you just still take this course as, it, as I believe you're still going to learn something new, either through the lectures or the problem set. And if you're going to take this course, you can enroll in it through edX and 
The course link can be found in the chat which I have sent with below. Okay, yeah. Send to the chat. Okay, so next I would learn the concept behind object oriented programming, its principles and design. And this is mainly because object oriented programming is the de facto way of developing such applications using the Dart programming language. So a resource I suggest for learning OOP is this 30 minute video in the free code cap channel. So OOP is um, what is mainly just conceptual. So you just need to understand how to, um, the idea behind it so you can write it in Dart code. So after learning introductory computer science and programming concepts along with OOP, you should be more than ready to learn how to create applications with Flutter. But before that, I suggest that you learn how to write code in the Dart programming language first. For this, I would suggest the Dart language guide tour provided by Google in the Dart documentation. If you'd rather prefer video resources, however, I suggest this course by Wicked. And Wicked is a software engineer at Very Good Ventures, which is the leading consultancy company for Flutter development and is leading the development of the doc library for Flutter. So Dart is a pretty small language, despite it being feature rich, and you can, you can definitely grasp the basic of it in about a weekend or two. And after learning Dart, you should be more than ready to learn better. Okay, so I have this little roadmap here on how I would learn better after taking the resources I mentioned earlier. I'd like to mention though that at this point, you should be comfortable with reading documentation and setting solutions for the problems you're facing because tutorials and courses will only teach you so much. You can learn faster and better by reading to the documentation, documentation and searching about possible solutions to the problems that you're facing on hand. First, it's obviously to learn other basics. For this, I recommend the Flutter Getting Started Code Lab, which is available to the link there. So after doing this code lab, you should build some small projects. Projects that, that I consider small are usually UI clones or applications that pay to print JSON data from APIs, such as the weather app. And if it's a good thing to mention that if you're lacking some knowledge about certain things and making this much in this small project, such as I think it's programming and whatnot, you should take this as an opportunity to improve your skills in understanding the Flutter documentation or within tutorials provided by somebody else. And as I mentioned earlier, reading allows you to learn faster and better if you're actively learning the material as opposed to video-based ideas where, um, where instead of actively learning, you're just passively learning. Anyways, moving on. You should then learn a state management solution. There are a lot of state management solutions and stuff out there, but the big players are Block, Serverpod, and Providers. I suggest you guys take a look at these three and then try them out for yourself to see which one you're most comfortable with. And again, I suggest that you guys refer to the documentation. It's also a great time to mention that you should take third party opinions seriously on topics such as this, especially in tech, because what works for you may not work for someone else. One might prefer blocks, another might prefer river pod, and so on and so forth. This applies to like as well, by the way, so take your time and choose what you think is best for you. Next on the roadmap is build, 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 build projects. You shouldn't build your typical project, however, like app phones or whatever. Instead, the projects you build should solve a problem that someone has and probably you have as well. An example of a problem that someone might have is that they want their messenger app to have the feature of sending messages at a later date. So it's a scheduling feature. Another problem someone might have is that they have too many messaging apps and that they want to consolidate their app into one application. To create an app that combines all your social media based messages into one. Point of the matter is, is that you should make an app that solves your problem. And by doing that, you become a problem solver and a software engineer at the same time. Companies in the industry want engineers who know how to problem solve, and you could be the best programmer out there, but if you can't solve a problem, then all you have is a pretty neat, it's a pretty neat skill. So create projects that solve the problem. And you should create around 50 projects like this, 
So you have something to add in your resume, then after that, you should apply to internship postings. Okay, so there you go. That's how I go about the next part. Again, if I were to start over, thank you so much for listening to my presentation. I hope you guys learned something new. And oh my gosh, I've, I've underestimated it. I've overestimated how long I'd be presenting. So, so long, I, had, I have a lot of time left. So I guess we could like, use that for answering questions from the audience if they have any. All right. Ayan. Thank you, po, Mr. Ruaro. Again, guys, if anyone has any questions about our topic this morning, um, I'm sure Mr. Ruaro naman is delighted to answer them. So kindly drop them via our Zoom chat or submit it through the link provided below, okay? So, gamit, gamit dahil medyo madam, uh, matagal pa namin yung oras natin, gamitin mo natin yung time for this Q&A, okay? Ayan guys, magtanong na po tayo. Ayan, ayan. First question, first question, first question, first question. Why Whether I add developers prefer Flutter than other cross-platform framework like React Native? Okay, so um, um, the the popular opinion here is that Flutter is much more enjoyable to write than React Native because if you written React Native code, it uses JavaScript and HTML, and um. For most developers, including myself, that is a very um, cumbersome task. One, because HTML um, is really not a good way to like perform to write UI things because of the capabilities that it offers. And medyo nakakalito siya at start. Second is JavaScript and siguro in extension TypeScript. It isn't as um, friendly to write or as enjoyable to write as Dart. So, um, Flutter provides the, as the avenue, as developers the avenue to write code in a language that we love. And again, the Flutter framework has a lot of built-in widgets that allows us to be more productive compared to HTML. So, second question. Send to na lang. All Any right. tips for, for our next question? Uh, Any tips for software engineering internships, especially when you're fresh out of boot camps or self-learning tech? Hmm. Um. Um, the thing is, is that you could mass apply to internships, but then uh, everyone does that. Everyone mass applies to internships. So what, what I did to get my interviews was I emailed them. Even companies that didn't have internship postings, I emailed them. And actually, wait, I'm going to send you guys a link. So I emailed companies, and you can actually... Um, search companies here on remotely.com, which is which is like um, a site that that um, like it allows you to search for development jobs that are fully remote, and they don't have they don't really have internship postings in this site. But what I did was I was I, I searched for companies here, then I emailed them, then I said that I want to do an internship. So you can do that, and you can do that to other companies. As well, um, one of the companies here in the Philippines called Paymongo. I don't know if you guys have heard of, have heard of Paymongo, but it's a startup, startup here in the Philippines that I interviewed for. And the same thing, I emailed them. I just emailed them. They had no posting for an internship. I just emailed them, told them my, what my skills are, how I think I'd be useful, and then I sent them my resume in the email as well. So that's how I got my interviews, and that's also how I got my internship at Certic. Ayan. So make sure guys na nagte-take note kayo ah. So next question po, what do you recommend code editors in Dart if Dart is the is first to learn than Flutter? Uh, I'd always recommend Visual Studio Code over any other text editor out there and it has great integration with Flutter and Dart language. So you just need to install the language itself or you can install Flutter first because installing Flutter also installs the Dart language and just write code and visual to the code. Okay, 
a next question po. Inask niya if Samarine or Flutter. Oh, Flutter. <laughs> Samarine is a um, it's a technology that is slowly being abandoned and it and it isn't really that popular anymore. Um, it's usually used in enterprise applications that use C sharp, but other than that, yeah, it's it's a it's something that I should I don't recommend and it's something that most mobile developers don't recommend as well. So next po, sabi niya is Flutter is not matured enough since it was just re released back 2017. So there are few communities and few features. So how, com how companies still use it despite of it? Right, so um, I think Flutter was released in 2018 actually, not 2017, but I think 2017 they released the alpha version of Flutter. But Flutter has actually gone, gone through great leaps and has been really matured now until has been matured. So actually back in March, they released Flutter 2.0, which um, introduced a lot of features in Flutter such as node safety. And then um, last Thursday, I believe Flutter had another upgrade, which, which is Flutter 2.8. So Flutter, and there are a lot of communities using Flutter. If you're active on Twitter, like me, you will, you will know that Flutter is a very popular technology. So um, Flutter is actually matured now compared to before, and it's and it's actually being preferred over over React Native by some companies, including the one that I'm interning at right now. All right. So next question, Paul. Do you think Flutter still be popular in the future? Uh, yes, I believe that Flutter will be popular in the future, and it is already popular right now because um, if you're basing on GitHub stars it's way more popular than React Native, but um, it is poised to rise even more in popularity in the coming years because um, one, Google is backing it, obviously, and two, a lot of companies are transitioning to Flutter, such as Microsoft. Ayan, guys. Questions pa po. Ayan. Kung may iba pa kong tanong sa ating topic today, Flutter. Ayan. Questions lang. Ayan, may question pa from, from Slido. May nag-ask po, what motivates you to do what you do? Um, if, if this is the first to programming, I'm gonna guess this is the first to programming. So um, I started learning programming back in grade 11. So that was like quarantine time, like um, early COVID, COVID era. So um, I, I only just started to learn it because I got bored in my house and I was a typical teenager that was just browsing through my social media. And I just, and I like figured out that, that um, this is getting pretty boring. Like my life is getting pretty boring because I'm just stuck here. So I decided to learn programming and over time that became, that turned into a passion, which um, I guess it turned into a passion because I wanted to, I want to become a, uh, um, a startup founder one day. And the, and the sole reason that I want to become a startup founder is that I want to help people solve problems. So I guess that circles back to what I said earlier to build projects that solve a problem. So ayun, um, what motivates me is solving problems. Nice and galing naman. So next question po is, what is the first project you did using uh, Flutter? Um, I can't remember actually. But yeah. Let me... I'm gonna check if it's still in my GitHub, but I, I'm I'm guessing it's a pretty small project. Uh, hold on. Sure. Pa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, the first project that I made in Flutter is a true or false class application, and uh, basically I think looking at the code, it's <laughs> I just hard coded the questions and just like let the user press if the if the answer is true or false or not. So um, it's like a pretty, pretty basic app, pretty small as well. And it's not really that, it's not really a quiz app. It's just like um, three, like 10 questions and yun na yun. But it's still, it's um, the main goal of a small project is to learn more about the, about the technology. And I, pretty, and I did learn more about Flutter while I was doing it, despite it being a pretty small app in the process. Okay, so another question po. 
any starter plotter projects you may recommend to build for beginners? Mm -hmm. um, um, like I mentioned earlier, you guys could look at UI clones or you could look at um, small APIs and then integrate those to Flutter. So I'm going to send here a link. So this is, I sent a link to Rapid API, which is a, which is a like a market hub for using APIs. So they have a lot of free APIs here and they also have paid APIs and you can use those to your Flutter application. So for example, there is a coronavirus API here. And so you can use that in your Flutter app to practice like asynchronous programming and then print that out into a nice interface using Flutter. So next question po. So ano daw pong mare-recommend nyo for learning Dart and Flutter, books or PDF? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, um, I'm guessing this like kapag ganyan walang problema na magbayad right? because most of the great stops and flutters are paid. So um, I'm guessing my, my, my like avenue price to pay that. But first and foremost, for courses on Flutter, I don't really recommend anything except Siguro Angela use Bootcamp on Flutter, which is available on Udemy. And I'm happy for it, Chef. Again, I recommend this one if you're like into video resources. However, it is um, it's really outdated now. It it hasn't been ported to Flutter 2.0, nor does it use not safety. And in the latter, and in one of the course modules on um on writing on using Firebase is actually like the APIs that you is outdated now. So you like you need to search the APIs on your own. If you're gonna take this course in conjunction with learning Firebase. Other than that, there is a book that I that I like in Flutter called Flutter Reference, I believe. It's the name. Let me search it again. Yeah, here. So the the name is called Flutter Complete Reference. So this is like an all-in-one resource for learning Flutter, but it is paid. I think it's $50 to, to buy the book. Yeah, this is a paid book and it, it has features on, like it has chapters on everything that you would need in Flutter, such as synchronous programming, concurrency, um, SQL integration. And it also has a module on site management with provider and block. So, if you have the money, I suggest going to this book. So other than those, other than that book and the Angel U course, I don't really recommend anything else other than this group because I find this too amazing. Okay, so next question po. How many hours or days did it took for you to build an app using Flutter? Um, that is That question is actually, um, um, how do I, it's, um, you can't really, I can't really like predict how long it will take you to create a project. Just but just need to like go on and continue building it. Um, typically, if you're gonna like, if you're doing the with the small project like UI clones and using like small APIs, that will probably take a day to a week because it's just quite small. It's just for learning. But if you're like making production level applications like like they will deploy my hand or something that would take months because it is manami kang kailang as it it's like like such as deployment and stuff like that so you can't really predict but what i can say is that you should enjoy the journey of writing a project because um first and foremost it is it is a learning opportunity and you should take advantage of any learning opportunity that you can have okay so next question po, what's the best practices do you recommend to have efficient self-learning in coding? Um, it's just like, this is like learning in general, okay. So I suggest that you guys don't burn yourself out. So don't, don't like um, blaze through learning, like tuloy tuloy na pag -aaral. Don't do that. Um, you, you should know how to space out your learning into timeframes. Um, I suggest using the Pomodoro technique, 
which is like a technique which you can use to like keep track, parang like keep yourself responsible and at the same time take breaks. And then I think that also goes on to what I want to say next, which is to take naps. The guys should like take naps a lot so that your brain can consolidate the information that you just learned. And it's also like, so it applies to like learning in general and not just in programming. So if you want to learn, you should like, if you want to learn efficiently, if you want to learn things for the long run and not just for the short term, like for exams, you know, if you want to remember things long after the exam, you guys should space out your learning and also take naps whenever your body asks for it. So to me, itulog na lang yan. Okay, may nag-request po. Can you show us some of your Flutter projects? Um, I don't, I don't have them on my laptop actually since um, medyo, medyo, how do I say this? Medyo, medyo space, space. space. So yeah, I can't, so, yeah, show. I can't show. So next question po is, um, in using Flutter as a beginner, is it easy to do both adapt adaptive and responsive apps or you recommend to focus on just one for practice po? So um, a lot of people get confused on what adaptive app means. So when you say adaptive, it means that the UI is like, the UI is native. So you have Android libraries for Android apps, iOS libraries for iOS, and so on and so forth. But in Flutter, you can actually just create one UI for one code base. So you don't have to, you don't really have to focus on adaptive app itself unless you really want to. But other than that, responsive apps, I recommend that you learn how to do that after you created your small apps. And after you create your small apps, you can extend them to become responsive so you can practice on that as well. Okay, may nag-ask po ng question, sabi niya, is it possible for a student taking a different course like me? Like, I'm taking BS Entrepreneurial Management. I don't know any knowledge ko kasi in IT and SE. So, I guess ang question niya is possible siguro na matuto ng Flutter or... Ayan po. Yeah, absolutely. So, gonna like... um, It's still learning. So... There's nothing wrong with that. You're still gonna grow, and and you you mentioned that we're taking entrepreneurial management, and companies would love that. Companies would love if you're if you if you have experience if you if you're taking a course in a different field other than software engineering, but you know how to code, you know how to write programs, because that means that you love to learn, you love how to solve problems, and it also gives you um sub like it gives you like expertise in a specific field that is not related to software engineering and it and it doesn't really be like known to a typical software engineer with a computer science degree. So even if you have a different degree, I say go for it. Okay. So next question po, uh, describe a time when you face a significant challenge in completing a project. So how did you handle it? And what steps did you take to get there po? Hmm. okay so um first i think it's it's a great thing if you're like facing a significant challenge and completing a project that's great it means you're being it means you're being challenged and when you're challenged that's when you learn so when it comes to things like this like you need to be patient with yourself and not um um kick yourself too much um need to know that solving things take time and actually, I guess it's a great thing to mention now that in my internship, I had a I had a bug that I that I saw that I had to solve for um, three weeks. So I was just working on that one bug for three weeks, and like, and you just need to be patient because the answer will eventually come to you on how to solve it. And also take naps; <laughs> it will help. Taking naps will help. 
Okay, take naps daw guys. Pero wag muna ngayon ha kasi may speaker pa tayo susunod. Okay, next question. Is for is working with foreign startups challenging than PH startups and companies? Maybe share any experience that what's their work culture is like. Hmm. Um it's not really that challenging um because um startups are like remote first startups they do um, asynchronous time management. So asynchronous time, so if I guess you guys are familiar with asynchronous things now, asynchronous lectures and all, it's just, it's just the same thing. You like work on your task on your own time. We don't, we don't micromanage you. We don't keep track of the hours you use in working. So even if it's say na eight hours come to work today, you don't try to come to work, we won't really care as long as you do the task that you're working on. So that's that's how it is for remote first startups, be it foreign or Philippine based. However, if you're Philippine based na company or startup na my office and pia um you really have to put in, you really have to show that you're busy if you don't want to be busy. So yeah, and that's the that's the work culture for remote first companies. So yan po, eh, sabi po, uh, next question po, sabi po dito, if it's okay lang ba? na mag-share ka ng biggest project or project na ginagawa, ginagawa mo right now using Flutter, kahit po description lang ganun. Mm, okay, so the, pro the project that, that I'm working on on my internship is actually a, um, a crypto wallet application. So, you know, um, you guys are familiar with MetaMask. Are you guys familiar with MetaMask? Kahit isa lang. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 So, MetaMask is a like a crypto wallet for the web, and it also has its Android and iOS apps. So we're working something on something similar like that using Flutter, but we all, but we also have we also took it a step further because we've added the ability to trade NFTs or non fungible tokens in our in our application, and we've also added a feature there that is like native to our company. Which is um, um, auditing cryptocurrencies. So like that's auditing cryptocurrencies. That's like to check if there are if secure ba in cryptocurrency na yon. Para di siya pa dun. All right, guys, we're down to our last two questions. So, eto po mayroon pa nagtanong. When it comes to libraries, does Flutter ahead to Kotlin in terms of Android development? Um, um like. If you're gonna do like your Android development, Flutter is friendlier than Kotlin, and Flutter is also way more friendlier than Java. And but if we're talking about libraries, Flutter is like Kotlin is ahead, but that but since it is native, but Kotlin is native and Flutter has to catch up on the features that are being um, deployed in Kotlin and Android Dev. But Flutter is, um, Flutter gets up to speed really quickly it like takes a few months for features in kotlin for new features in kotlin to be introduced in flutter but the core features of under development are already in flutter so you might not even need the new features that are being implemented in kotlin yet so when it comes to libraries kotlin is ahead but flutter already has the core libraries being used in app development so i okay may pahabol pa ata so ayun po, last questions na po. Um, can you recommend good state management for Flutter? Mm, so, like like I said earlier, when it comes to like third party opinions on things, you shouldn't take it too, shouldn't take it too hard too seriously because um, what everyone has different opinions on different things, and what works for you may not work for someone else. So, um, if you're gonna go on Reddit, they would say avoid block, go to Riverpod, go to provider. So I followed that. I went to Riverpod, I went to Provider, but I didn't like it as much. I actually enjoyed writing blog better than Riverpod or Provider. So, and that's actually the state management that I use, which is block. And, but I'd recommend it, it's pretty good. But again, you should explore things on your own and see what works out for you first. 
Okay, thank you very much. So that's it for now. If you have any other questions in mind, just message us on our Facebook page and we will forward it to our guest speaker. So, Mr. Ruarot, thank you very much for an informative presentation this morning. As a thank you for taking the time to speak with us at our event and providing us with such valuable information, I'd like to present this certificate to you. Certificate of Appreciation, Google Developer Students Club, Technological University of the Philippines, Manila, presents this certificate to Mr. Erickson Neil Ruara II for imparting valuable insights in the event GTEC Summit 2021, grounded, getting grounded with Google Technologies. Given this 12th day of December 2021 by a Zoom web conferencing, signed by our GDSC lead and president, Ms. Justin Nicole S. Borbe, and our Chief Executive Officer, Mr. John Carlo P. Lechoso.